Welcome to the inaugural uh, KFAN Big Ten Basketball with Tiny Joe Nelson and myself, intern Gal Lindsay Gensel. Um, kind of a an impromptu show today as we're going to kick this off for you guys. The Gophers are six games into the Big Ten Conference. And as Joe knows, because I've been complaining about it all week, it is a big week at the University of Minnesota because classes started yesterday on yes. Tuesday after the big Martin Luther King holiday. And for the Gopher basketball team, it was kind of a, a week of change. Practices were switched to 8 a.m. And as Tubby Smith announced after the Iowa game on Sunday, he will be leaving for a little bit this week to do some recruiting, which is obviously an important part of a basketball team. Um, so little Joe and I, tiny Joe, excuse me. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> We're thinking we would just go through the last two games, which was the big win over Purdue last week and Sunday's semi-ugly loss, or win, excuse me, over yeah. Iowa. Yeah, it was almost a loss. It was kind of nerve-wracking there. It was okay. It was okay. Yeah, so we're just going to kind of go through, give you guys a little update on what's happening in Gopher basketball um, from our point of view, kind of talk about what we like, what we don't like, and I think an important part Players to watch. I think that's kind of a, a big thing coming up with this Gopher roster. I don't know about if you have any players that you're currently looking at. Well, I think I think you just absolutely have to keep the same guys intact right now, Lindsey. Al Nolan has been getting to the free throw line. He's been he's been the catalyst for the team. With Trevor Mbakwe's deal coming off the bench, missing three four minutes at the outset of a basketball game is not going to hurt this team. Obviously not. I mean, the guy's still blowing everybody away in the Big Ten in rebounds per game. I think nearly 12 per game. Second best is Jared Sol and Juwan Johnson with about nine and a half. It's, he, 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 he is literally, by far right now, the best rebounding big man in the Big Ten. So if he keeps doing what he's doing, if you can get Al Nolan to keep scoring 12, 13 points a game and getting to the free throw line and hitting 80% of those shots, I think they'll be just fine. I would love to see, though, Blake Hoffarber hit more shots from the prison. Oh, poor Blake. And the thing with Blake is Blake had a great outing against Purdue, put up huge numbers yeah. in that Purdue game, was the leading scorer. And then against Iowa, his numbers were lower. But one thing you have to look at with Blake, he was in, he was in so he had so much control on the ball. There was one play where he had this sweet bounce pass to Trevor, and Trevor just threw it up into a dunk. And yeah. what's great about Blake is he doesn't need to be the star player. And I think that's something that's come out with this this Gopher squad this year is that no one's out there trying to you know make the ESPN top ten. They are making the ESPN top ten, but everyone's out there. Their their goal is to win the game, and their goal is to. You know, basically just get the points on the board. It doesn't matter who does it. I think a, a key in that is Al Nolan. Al Nolan against Purdue was hesitant. He would, you know, prepare for a shot, almost kind of panic and throw the ball away. And you could just sense the frustration from the crowd. And yes. he, yeah. he was so in control against Iowa. And one thing that's great about Al, and it's great about both the seniors, him and Blake, is their ball handling skills. And I think that's something that if the Gophers can utilize that, especially on defense, Al was... No matter where the ball was when the Gophers were on mm -hmm. D, Al was there. Like every time you turned around, he was getting the ball. He was, you know, forcing turnovers, forcing out of bound plays. It was, it was really great to see. I mean, granted, second half against Iowa didn't start off as the Gophers were, were hoping. That's okay. A 9-0 run to start the second half. That's that's okay. I mean, that's going to happen. But this Gopher team is used to that. They're used to going through those four, five, six plus minute stretches where they don't hit a shot. Yeah. What they did on what, what they did on Sunday against Iowa though was continue to get to the free throw line, and that's what that's what kept them from really getting beaten beaten by more in the start of that second half than they did. I mean, they were they were up 30, 30 to nineteen at the break, trailed forty to thirty seven at one point in the second half. That's a twenty one to seven start to the second half. But the only reason they, they scored those seven points basically was because of free throws, and they had dry spells throughout the game. I mean. We all know. We all know what this team is all about, and it's not offense. 65 points per game, I think, is second worst in the Big Ten. In conference play, that is, 73 or so overall. I mean, it's, they're not going to blow anybody away offensively, but they don't have to. And back to Al Nolan, he is by far the best on-ball defender, as far as the guards go, in the Big Ten. And you're talking about Demetri McKamey, who I love. Kalen Lucas is having a horrible season. Taylor Battle is all offense. Jordan Taylor is the best all-around guard. But Al Nolan, right now, I would argue he's a close second, third, in that second, third tier for all-around play in the last couple of games in the Big Ten. And if he can continue to do that, that'll be a, that'll be huge for the Gophers. I mean, they don't have a lot of depth, no Mo Walker. You lose out on uh, you lose out on a lot of minutes uh, when you're missing that big man. And then DeVoe Joseph leaving, you need Al Nolan to step up. And if he doesn't, 
this team is going to suffer. And we've seen that in multiple games this year where he's turned the ball over, gone 1 for 10 from the floor, 0 out of 5 from the free throw line. But when he's playing like he is right now, I think they'll be in every single game. And the next four games are going to be key. You get Michigan on Saturday, Northwestern, Purdue, Indiana. Three out of four at home or on the road, the lone home game being Northwestern next, what, Wednesday? Next Wednesday, January 26th, I believe. Yes, Wednesday at the barn. That's big. But then after that, I mean, you should really win all four of those games. You go three and one, I'm happy with that. You're six and four in conference play. And then you have two huge home games at the start of February against Ohio State and uh, Illinois. I mean, you, you need to do, you need to take care of business in these these next four games. At least three out of four. I can see you losing on the road to Purdue. That's fine. They're they're a very good team. We saw them here at the barn, but you got to go on a run right now. This is where you take care of business and ensure your spot as a as an NCAA tournament team. Well, one of the things that I have that you brought up is when the Gophers lost Mo Walker um, when I was down in Madison for the Gopher Badger game. Mm -hmm. It's a huge setback for the team and one of the things that I think will be crucial in these next four games that you brought up is the younger guys have got to step up. My personal favorite player right now, Chip Ar Armelin. Like the yeah, kid yeah. when he's on the court, he's on fire, he's energized, he I mean he doesn't make a lot of plays but when he does they're almost like firecrackers underneath the team. Yeah, like the yeah. team just gets around him. One player that I, and, and I know everyone says this, someone has got to wake up Ralph Sampson III. Like, <laughs> Please do. It's just watching him in, in warm-ups. He's energized. He's you know dancing to music, joking around with his teammates. And it's like the game clock starts and the kid goes to sleep. Yeah. And he could be a powerhouse on the court. I mean, He should be a powerhouse. He should be, court. exactly. Yeah. He's, he's huge. We need that height after losing Mo Walker. And it was really sad on the Purdue game when... Coach Chubby Smith is sending in Ralphie for yep. Colton, and yep. literally the whole second level of Williams Arena just, it's a slow mo, like, no. Yeah. Everyone's, yeah. no one has confidence in the kid. And granted, he hit back to back, you know, baskets to, you know, which ended up giving the Gophers basically the lead over Purdue, which was huge for them, you know, in those final minutes of the game, which mm -hmm. I don't think anyone in the Purdue game scored for about three minutes there at the end, towards the end of the no, game. It, it was, was strong defense. Exactly. Yeah. And so, we need players like Ralphie to kind of step up and understand what their role now is on the team. Well, I'm with you on that 100%. I mean, I'm not going to jump out of the barn for excitement when Colton Iverson or Ralph Sampson step on the court. They, none of them have impressed me in their, in, their, in their years with the U of M. I mean, I think it's, it's potential that is still there, but they just have to harness it. We saw against Iowa seven blocks with Ralph Sampson. That's what you need to have. If you can do that... I mean, not seven blocks a game. Get your two and a half, three blocks a game, but add something. Get down on the block. Use your six foot eleven, seven foot frame, and do something other than stand 14 feet from the basket and hope to be found for an open jumper. That's not going to cut it. I mean, in Bakwe, beast down low. Colton Iverson, average player. Not a great player by any means. I mean, he's a nice spell player for 10, 11, 12 minutes a game. But Ralph Sampson, if you're going to be on the floor for 25 to 35 minutes a night, they need more out of him offensively. Defensively, I'm satisfied. But yeah, like you said, more fire would be nice. And if they don't get a complete team effort, meaning every single guy steps up on every single night, you're a 500 Big Ten team at 9-9 nine and nine at the end of the season, and you're sitting on the bubble on March 14th, or whenever <laughs> Selection Sunday is, and everyone has a heart attack again. I mean, yeah. we, I'm sick of going through it, and this team is good enough to be better than that. I think after last year seeing what talent we had, and I think one of the things that's hard for this Gopher squad is they're getting attention for all the wrong reasons, and I think what's great for Al Nolan is he didn't play last year, he was you know, getting all this national attention for things I'm sure he doesn't want, you know, it's not what you want to be on ESPN for. And so it's yeah. great for these guys, for Trevor and Bachway to be, you know, kind of getting into actually getting to play the game. You know, it's yeah. the yeah. drama, hopefully, knock on wood, is over and this Gopher squad can really concentrate on Michigan on the road on Saturday. Michigan, who is just a shock. I mean, they're pushing, garbage. Push, well, pushing Kansas to overtime. Michigan's garbage. You know, we'll, <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. There's some people out there who think that the Michigan home court advantage is going to be enough to take over the Gophers. Well, they've lost four in a row to Michigan, but they had they had uh, they had uh, Manny, whatever his name was. I can't remember his last name, but uh, he was he's in the NBA now. Deshaun Sims, outstanding player. And when you look at this team now. Completely different. Tim Hardaway Jr. is not Tim Hardaway Sr. I like him, but he's not going to uh, scare me away from anything. They're one of the worst. They are the worst scoring offense in the Big Ten. Gophers are second worst, but still four <laughs> points better in conference not play. Not a good matchup for and us. And they're a 
horrible defensive team. Four, fourth worst scoring defense in the Big Ten. If there, was a, if there was one scenario where I could pick out a matchup for the Gophers and say this could be a blowout, Michigan is it, home or away. It should be a blowout. All right, well, we will have to wait and see, I guess. He's a little bit more confident than I am, <laughs> not to uh, discount my Gopher squad. But... I'm not confident. It should. I should be confident, though. Yeah, we, but we will have to put a little wager on that one. Fine with me. All right, well, tune in next week. Uh, I think we're going to stick with Wednesdays. Wednesdays work good for you. Wednesdays, 1 o'clock, be there. Perfect. See you then.